great holiday weekend of racing in the books here at beautiful Belmont Park as we wrap up Stars and Stripes Festival weekend. Eric Donovan here with Maggie Wolfendale on Belmont Insider. It was a little, little early there on the uh, introductions, but anyway, Eric, Maggie, and uh, great to be here on uh, Insider, and uh, we got a lot to look forward to on this show. Yeah, we really do. I mean, recapping yesterday, Eric, we saw some dominating blowout performances, namely by our headliner, Lady Eli, who arguably is one of the best horses in the country, and then a lot of, like, close bobs yesterday. So it just made for excellent days racing, and I hope everybody enjoyed the fireworks as well as I hope you enjoy the show, too. I hope so as well. We have the uh, River Memories as our Sunday feature to get to a little bit later on in the program, but we'll start off here with headlines, and, of course, the headline of the weekend, really Lady Eli capturing the show here at Belmont Park. A lot of great horses on, uh, on display here yesterday at Belmont but Lady Eli, the real deal with her win in the Belmont Oaks. Yeah, Eric, I mean, she ran nearly two seconds faster. I mean, yes, they had a lot more pace early on in this mile and a quarter Belmont Oaks than they did in the Derby, but she was so dominant here. She motored home as she typically does and really kind of mocked everybody for thinking that she's in the toughest spot. This might be her undoing, but no, she proven wrong. She's gone six for six, picked up a 98 fire speed figure, and Chad looking down the road as well. You're looking down the road at either the Beverly D at at Arlington against older Phillies and Mares or the Lake Placid at Saratoga against the straight three-year-old Phillies. Imagine, uh, you know, the competition a little bit on the light side for, for her in terms of three-year-old Phillies um, in the Lake Placid, so she'd probably be a heavy favorite in a smaller field up there. But what do you think about the possibility of her going out to Arlington and taking on the Olders? Well, of course I want her to stay here, but like I said, she looks to be the best horse in the country, and I think she can definitely handle older company. And, you know, Chad also alluding to the fact that the Queen Elizabeth down at Keeneland would be kind of the goal right before the and the deciding factor of um, the Belmont, or Belmont, the Breeders' Cup turf, or Philly Mare turf for her as her year-end performance. All right, well, a lot to look forward to with Lady, Lady Eli and uh, uh, some tough calls Chad's going to have to make in terms oh, of yeah. where where to go for uh, for her next start. I feel bad for him. Yeah, not, not, not really. <laughs> 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 wins every, it wins every big race, as uh, we just saw him take down uh, the U.N. down at Monmouth Park as well. Uh, the other force, the other big race on the card was the uh, Belmont Derby, and a force the pass really came through with a big performance there for uh, trainer Alan Goldberg, uh, a horse that I think, you know, kind of surprised some people with uh, how well he did in this race, really a powerhouse performance in what looked like a very evenly matched race on paper yeah it really did this was the, the kind of race where you could you could make a case for a lot of horses in here and it was a great ride and a really a kind of heady decision by joel rosario he was sitting on the rail he said he could tell that the horse didn't really want to be there so once that rail opened up a bit with a, a bolo just not running his race so it turned out everything was okay with him um, later on upon examination. But he, you know, forced the pass, just motored home. He ran his last half in 45 and change. So uh, really a dominant performance, a horse who has, you know, only two off, two non-wins, a, a couple second-place finishes for Alan Goldberg. And he kind of really forced himself on the center stage as one of the best three-year-old turf horses in the country. Now, the, the race with the most controversy in it yesterday was probably the Suburban for uh, the older horses on the main track going a mile and a quarter. Uh, FNX and Tonalist really uh, put on a nice performance there. I thought Tonalist was all done at the top of the stretch, but he really uh, came through with a good performance here. And, you know, very interesting way the race developed here. Tonalist made an early move into the race, and FNX was moving kind of with him. FNX ran into a little bit of traffic, and Tonalist kept going. Nonetheless, good efforts by both of them. 107 buyer speed figures they could rematch in the Suburban. And really a good effort by all three of the top finishers here. Coach Inge setting a blistering pace uh, on the front end with Street Babe. And really, he's only beaten a length and a half here by FNX and Tonalist. And, I mean, you did kind of feel bad for Tonalist not getting the kind of trip that he needs. He needs to, you know, sit back and make one run. Instead, he made his run down the backside and really was very game in defeat, I thought. FNX, change of bridle, a Halton bit on him. But also, Jimmy Jerkins just saying a different frame of mind. The Belmont day just kind of got to this horse, got him a little unglued pre-race, and he was just a happier, more mellow horse, and Dell is running out in the racetrack this time. All right, we'll talk a little bit more in depth about these uh, races on the National Racing Report uh, Monday and Tuesday, and a little bit more in this show a little bit later on as we check out top performers, but let's get to the Sunday action here in the uh, headline of the Sunday card. Was the River Memories for Phillies and Mares going a mile and a half on the turf? We'll throw it upstairs to Larry Comas for the call. Racing in the River Memories. And it's Goldius Pony who comes out running well. 
To the outside, Sabbatical's got some early speed and Jane Peterson between horses, and then it's Maximova down on the inside running in fourth position early on. Granny Max Kitten is next, and then Dido, and White Rose trails the field with one lap to go. And it's Goldie S. Yes Pony who leads the way. Goldie S. Yes Pony in front through an opening quarter mile in 24 and 4 fifth seconds, reasonable enough for the mile and a half distance. Jane Peterson is second to the outside, and then Maximova, who rides the hedge going into that turn right behind the front runner. Then sabbatical in fourth, Granny Max Kitten, Dido, and White Rose. White Rose still about seven lengths behind Goldie S. Yes Pony. Kendra Carmouche and Goldie S. Yes Pony round that. Clubhouse turn here in front by a length over Jane Peterson while Maximova continues to save all the ground as they go to the backstretch in 51 and one fifth seconds. And they're followed by sabbatical fourth by another two. Granny Max Kitten is next. And then it's Dido and the trailer is White Rose. On to the backstretch they go. And it is still Goldie S. Pony. It's been Goldie S. Pony all the way so far. Jane Peterson continues to press on the outside. Maximova is still right behind Goldie S. Yes Pony. And then comes Sabbatical on the outside fourth. After that, it's Dido, Granny Max Kitten, and White Rose still at the back of the field. Not much change so far. Seven lengths separates them all through three quarters in one seventeen and four. So Goldie S. Yes Pony still the leader, and Maximova wants to roll on the inside. No place to go right now, though. Goldie S. Yes Pony, three quarters of a length. Jane Peterson second. Maximova third to the inside. Sabbatical follows in fourth. It's going to go three wide into the turn. And that it's Dido, Granny Max Kitten, White Rose has been last every step of the way so far. Goldie S. Pony continues to lead the way. Jane Peterson has been pressing throughout. Maximova still waiting for a place to go. Granny Max Kitten's going to sweep up on the outside of Sabbatical. And then it's Dido and White Rose, and they're into the stretch. Goldie S. Pony turns for home in front. Granny Max Kitten trying to close in now, second on the outside. White Rose has made a rally from the back of the pack, and she's coming down the center of the course. Then Maximova and Dido, and they're coming down to the last 16th. And Goldie S. Pony's got plenty left in the tank to win all the way at a mile and a half. It was a three-way photo for second that went to Dido, and then it was Granny Max Kitten and White Rose. Might have to do some more investigating here into the uh, final uh, quarter mile time, but it comes up 22.15, uh, so definitely a fast come home here for Goldie Esponi, who set a nice pace. Yeah, I mean, the, the interior fractions were about 26 and change, and then it went to 24, and then, as you said, the last... Calculate it's about 22 and change. Uh, that seems very quick to come home in a mile and a half um, performance. We'll see if that's right. As you said, a little more investigation probably needed. But as I've always said, it helps to have a little bit of pace in these mile and a half races. So often it's a merry-go-round and then you have enough left in the tank where you just kick clear home. It always seems that way. The longer they go, the more you know the jockeys are you know trying to rate their horses and get them to finish. And the one that's up front, uh, you know, sets the easy pace and uh, comes home quick. As you saw Goldie Esponi do real quick. Kendra Carmouche. He strikes me as a guy here who rode for Chad Brown, another winner for Chad in a stake on the turf. But Kendra Carmouche strikes me as a guy going up to Saratoga. Yeah, he's not going to be the top one of the top five riders, but he can be a guy that gets it done and gets it done at a price for you. I totally agree with that. I mean, I thought he was a little unexposed, you know, heading into this Belmont meet, but he. His horses are taking some money. But the thing I like about Kendrick is he's aggressive. And he always tries with his horses. He always tries to do what, uh, you know, the connections want and what he thinks is best for the horse. He gives them the opportunity that they need. And I agree with you. I mean, he rides almost seems like first call for Bruce Levine now. And Bruce is always good for a long shot in Saratoga as well. Yeah. Chad's not good for the long shot, no. but it's good to be uh, on the barn and on some yeah. live ones. Uh, as said, we head up to Saratoga in a couple weeks, that's for sure. Let's take a look at the fourth race now. A uh, non-winners of uh, one for the uh, New York Breds uh, going uh, seven furlongs on the turf ladder. Good New York Breds on the turf, uh, the rest of the uh, card out here. And uh, we'll take a look at this one here with Larry. Terry on the far outside with a good beginning. Out for the lead with Kick and Libby and Lightning Lily. These two quickly take over, and there goes Barrier to Entry on the outside, and now up into third. Then it's Lakeview Lady, Bellica Terry back running in fifth up the back stretch. Blue Barrel is on the far outside and racing about six lengths off the lead. Alongside of Moonlit Sonic and Ember Morning, who's down at the rail. And the first quarter goes in 22 seconds flat as the field heads up the back stretch and moves for the turn, where Kick and Livy lives Lightning Lily by ahead.
On the outside is Barrier to Entry, third by another three. Belicatari follows in fourth. Then it's Lakeview Lady in fifth. Blue Barrel is on the outside of Moonlit Sonnet. They've got seven lengths to make up. And Amber Morning is last of them all. Kick and Livy, Lightning Lily, Barrier to Entry on the outside. These three all right together on the far turn. And right behind them is Belicatari, who's on the charge in fourth. Blue Barrel now being asked for more run on the far outside. has got to get going. And they're coming to the top of the stretch. Kick and Livy, Kick and Livy off the turn in front and here comes Bella Cateri after her Blue Barrel didn't have it today into the final furlong it is Bella Cateri Bella Cateri has taken the lead and on the outside Amber Morning is charging late and kicking Livy is third Bella Cateri and Amber Morning is coming Amber Morning is closing on the outside Amber Morning runs down Bella Cateri kicking Livy was third Moonlit Sun at fourth Bellicateri looks pretty solid here once uh, sweeps to the lead and uh, passing Kick and Livy, but uh, a late rally here from Amber Morning, Maggie, to get the money late. I think Amber Morning was a little bit dirtied up after her last performance, which was just a merry-go-round race. Alexandri, she had everything her own way. You know, uh, Amber Morning didn't get away well. She didn't have any pace to run into, and I thought this was, you know, the Amber Morning that we've known in seven furlongs I thought was ideal for her. And really, you go back to her races two and three back, they made her very logical here. Yeah, indeed, that's for sure. Uh, what about the uh, favorite here, Blue Barrel, getting bet Whoa. down to a 4-5 to five off the 23-1 uh, to one upset win. First time out, 4-5 to five against winners. Second time out, these types of horses seem to get over bet. And, you know, it just shows goes to show you experience does, does matter in these races. It does. It almost felt as though something may have went amiss with her, too, because that was... No performance at all. No, uh, no run from her whatsoever. Maybe that you know maiden race she comes out it will prove to be non-productive because let's face it, she was 23 to one in there and you know even money this time around. So yes, first time against winners did not prove uh, to go too well with Blue Barrel. All right, we'll take a quick time out here on Belmont Insider. A couple more state bred races on the turf to look at before we recap the whole card and recap the whole week. Stay tuned. More to come here on Insider. Favorite spot in all the racing, the backyard at Saratoga. Just got a little bit easier for you. If you don't want to get there when the gates open and rush to, to find your picnic table, you can uh, call now uh, or go to Ticketmaster.com and reserve your picnic table. And also uh, the new Carousel Sports Bar in action at the, at the spa as well. You know, sometimes I'm really jealous of all the people enjoying the races. As much as I adore my job and, and love it, sometimes I wish I could just hang out at Saratoga in the backyard. It, you know, just hang out with my buddies. But... It's just it's just a, such a fun place to be and so relaxed and, and everybody just enjoys it. Always, always fun to be uh, back there for sure. And uh, if you ever do get a day off, it's worth spending it hanging back out. there and hanging out back there and, uh, and talking to the fans. A lot of fun. Well, uh, just a couple weeks away to Saratoga. All looking forward to that. But a couple more races to bring you start to finish here on this Sunday episode of Insider. We'll head to a race number six now. Another race for the New York Reds. One mile of distance here. Point roll uh, coming back off a lengthy layoff for Christophe Clement as the one to beat. Point roll started well. Madam I, Madam on the outside with speed. And Snake Oil, Charlie and Sonny and Pally joined them on the inside. And checking out of there was Raffi's Bay as the field races onto the back stretch. Point roll is the leader. Madam I, Madam is running in second. And then Sonny and Pally to the inside. Mason's Dream on the far outside and going up between horses, Alexis Spirit. They're followed by Snake Oil, Charlie and Charity Reigns. Two lengths more back to Raffi's Bay. Jack's Heritage is after that northern trip at the back, and they went 24-3 and three for the first quarter mile. The favorites in front, Point Roll and Joel Rosario lead the way up the back stretch. With Madam My Madam second on the outside, Sonny and Pally running third along the rail, Alexis Spirit fourth to the outside of them. Snake Oil Charlie fifth between those two, and then comes Charity Reigns. Mason's Dream on the outside is next, Raffi's Bay, and then it is Jack's Heritage and Northern Trip. 48 and 3, the half for Point Roll, who continues to lead the field on the far turn. Madam My Madam is second. Alexis Spirit is third to the outside. Riding the rail is Sonny and Pally. And then it's Snake Oil Charlie, followed by Charity Reigns in sixth. Then Mason's Dream Northern Trip on the far outside. Jack's Heritage next, and they're into the stretch. Point Roll's got to get another furlong. Madam, I'm Adam, trying to make a race of it, but Point Roll's getting away. Getting away quickly now to lead by three. Madam, I'm Adam is second. Jack's Heritage closing late on the inside, and then Sonny and Pally. Point Roll is dominating the field here. 
wins it in hand. Jack's Heritage got second, third close, maybe Sonny and Pally, and a photo with Madam I'm Adam. A year to the day since Point Roll's last race, and he comes back a winner here for trainer Christoph Clement. Maggie, when this horse is good, he's very tough. You just don't know when he's going to show up with his A effort. Yeah, that's true. I mean, the thing is, is though, as you look back at that last race he had on the turf, uh, here he was... Uh, obviously in on, on softer ground and something must have want to miss for a year layoff. You have to think that's true. And really, when this horse is on firm ground, he's he's fairly unbeatable, especially in spots like this where, I mean, that one race just made him a monster layover in here. And Joel Rosario picks up his second win of the day. And Chris Clement is good getting him uh, back to the races fresh and ready to go. Obviously a horse that, you know, took a little while, may have had some issues earlier on in his career. Uh, a five-year-old gelding who only debuted as a, as a four-year-old last year. So uh, it's taken a while to get point rolled the races, but when he shows up with his good stuff, he's really uh, one of the top uh, New York Reds in these lower level conditions so far. We'll see what happens when he steps up uh, next time out. Move on to race number nine now, a maiden special weight for New York Reds, a mile and a 16th on the inner turf course here. Morning line favorite, a uh, four star crook with scratch, so uh, that uh, roll goes to the two, a somersault, Joel Rosario up from Mark Hennig. They're off. Bebop Raindrop, Somersault. These two out for the lead together. Out of Cypress Hills away running in third. Broken Borders in tight spot there and head to steady as Hushnell goes up on the outside. Then it's Lady in Shades along the rail. Farther out comes Saratiago. Is that all there is? Going up in between horses. And last of them all is Khaleesi Cat. So they race on to the back stretch. Bebop Raindrop in front. 25 and 4 was the opening quarter mile. An easy pace here for Bebop Raindrop, who's isolated out there in front by two over Somersault. And then to the outside, Hush now, and Eric Consell's having trouble there. Looks like an equipment problem, maybe, with Hush now, but he, now he seems to have it all straightened out and is running in third position. And then it's out of Cypress Hills, fourth on the inside. Broken Border is next. And then it's Lady in Shades. Is that all there is? On the outside, Saratiago and Khaleesi Cat at the back after a 50. And three half mile, Bebop Raindrop on top. Somersault is second, moving for the turn. Hush now, third to the outside. Out of Cypress Hills is fourth, and Broken Border to the outside, followed by Is That All There Is, who rides the inside five lengths off the lead. Then it's Saratiago, Lady in Shades, and Khaleesi Cat. And Bebop Raindrop just keeps on going along at an easy pace, three quarters and one, 14 and one. And Bebop Raindrop turns for home in front. To the outside comes Hush now in second. And then it's Somersault. Out of Cypress Hills trying to come up the rail. Broken Border is closing with Is That All There Is on the far outside. And here comes Is That All There Is on the outside of Somersault. Bebop Raindrop is back to third. And then comes Broken Border. Is That All There Is? Yes. By a neck over Somersault. And then it was Bebop Raindrop. Solid stretch run here as they come down to the wire. It's the number three. Is that all there is? Angel Cruz up for Barkley Tag. Sacatoga stable colors uh, in the winner's <laughs> circle. School bus wasn't here today, though. I didn't see uh, too many members of the Sacatoga stable in the winner's circle. No, it was a, it was a fairly uh, lesser group in the winner's <laughs> circle, that's for sure. Uh, but it was kind of a weird race where you had those horses who were all running against each other. Somersault, is that all there is? And uh, uh, Bebop, Green Drop, Out of Sight for Sales. And then you had some new faces, Khaleesi, Cat, Lady, and Shades, and they didn't show up at all. I really like them going in, but uh, it was the uh, the old tried and true ones that uh, got the job done here. And is that all there is? Is it made no longer? Made it no longer for Angel Cruz. And, you know, Angel's done a, a pretty solid job here since losing his uh, apprentice allowance. It's real tough for a rider, you know, to go through that, especially this time of year when you're yeah. coming up on, on primetime season here in New York. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, how he does throughout the rest of the summer. Obviously, Saratoga is going to be very tough for him. But, you know what, you bang out a few winners in there. You make a good impression with your attitude. You work hard in the morning. Maybe Maybe you come out of it better than you went in. I agree. And it feels like always in Saratoga, everybody gets to win at least one race. There's always there's a lot of races always, up there. Exactly. <laughs> there's always a race for somebody to win. <laughs> well, there's uh, five more races for somebody to win on this Sunday program, the ones we haven't taken a look at yet. So uh, let's take a look now at the stretches of races one, two, three, five, and seven. Ridden along at the back of the field as they come toward the top of the stretch. Jersey Jules and Julissa and Indy Gita coming up to them on the outside. Right behind those leaders is Yes for Success who angles out for the final furlong. It is Jersey Jules, Indy Gita to the outside and Yes for Success down the center of the course and the three of them come down to the wire. Yes for Success and Indy Gita. These two were noses apart. It was very close. Jersey Jules was third. 
Juliso is fourth. Three and a half links ahead of Ruby's Rocket Band, who's starting to close in as they run by a half mile in 46 and four, and they're into the stretch. And now it is pin and win. Pin and win has taken the lead, and here comes Ruby's Rocket Man, who's closing on the outside. These two well clear. The other's Lyrical Miracle has taken third. Pin and win, Ruby's Rocket Man. Ruby's Rocket Man with the momentum. Ruby's Rocket Man and Joel Rosario pull away to beat Pin and win. And then it was Lyrical Miracle, followed by Totty Royer. Truth. And jumping frack flash, a 46 flat half mile, and they're into the stretch. Pasilicious on the outside. Down toward the inside, Betsy's boy, Old Mexico to the outside. These three coming into the final furlong, and Pasilicious and Kendra Carmouche have the lead. Old Mexico, second, and closing on the outside. And then it's Bessie's boy in third. It's down to Pasilicious and Old Mexico. These two, and it's going to be close. And here's the finish, and it's Pasilicious. Over Old Mexico on the wire, then Gypsum Johnny and a winner, Jackson and Leonard between horses. And now losing ground there is Jackson and Leonard, and here comes 1020 on the far outside trying to put in a bid in the final furlong. Harbor King holding on to the lead at a huge price here. Harbor King in front. And on the inside, Greg's four-wheeler trying to close in, but it's still Harbor King. Greg's four-wheeler, a final bid. Then comes plundering. Harbor King's 31 to 1, and he did it. And then it was Greg's four-wheeler followed by plundering or to destroy Leilani's ticket. Jeter four wide, and they're into the stretch. And they have to get going now to catch Smooth Burt. Smooth Burt down to the eighth pole. Now five, six in front. Smooth Burt is pouring it on here as they come down to the 16th pole left the others behind american creed and jeter are next but it's all smooth bert he won by about 10 in the end jeter got second and then american creed and seek to destroy so that fifth race winner, Harbor King, definitely contributing to the pick six carryover for Wednesday to be just about uh, $40,000, 39232 uh, But, uh, Maggie, what about uh, race number seven, Smooth Burt, coming back to the races off a lengthy layoff for Leah Giamatti? Yeah, and uh, returning here as a gelding, Leah saying, well, I gelded him after that race, so it really didn't matter, Maggie, but I think it did. <laughs> as I've said all day, we'll, we'll, we'll um, agree to disagree on that. But Smooth Burt, he was dragging Jose out of the irons down the backside going 22 and change um he's definitely found a new game and luckily Le leah got to keep him um after he returned for 25,000. but you look through his company lines and he's faced way better than what he did today oh for sure i mean he was running against some of the top uh, three-year-olds uh, yeah. a couple years ago uh, new york breads at least uh, considering and uh it was a horse that we thought had some talent and you know was just never able to really put it all together well this you know was one of the races where he put it all together we'll see uh, how he follows uh, this up here uh, off the strong effort yeah, exactly. I will I mean Will she look at, you know, New York Bread Steak Race? We'll see what kind of number he gets back. It, it's a tough call because where do you go with him now? <laughs> Didn't see uh, who was claimed today, but uh, imagine that, uh, you know, he could have been a target. Uh, yeah, was? right. He could have been a good target there in race seven. He lost uh, four out of uh, race number seven to uh, new owners and uh, and uh, trainers and uh, a couple of shakes there for Leilani's ticket and uh, Jeter and a couple of claims earlier on the card as well. Yeah, exactly. Out of that maiden 40, Jackson and Leonard, he didn't show up in 1020. He didn't really either, but we'll go out for some pretty strong connections next time they are in the entries. All right, one more time out here on Belmont Inside. When we come back, we'll take a look back at uh, some of the Stars and Stripes uh, heroes from the uh, weekend and uh, wrap up the show as well. Stay tuned. No better way to segue into our top performers of the week than to look at the perhaps the top performance of all time <laughs> at the Belmont Park Secretariat, immortalized in the paddock at the Belmont Park, of course, referring to his Triple Crown victory in the uh, Belmont Stakes uh, back uh, uh, some uh, time ago. And uh, we'll take a look at the top performers now. And uh, Spitzer was where we'll start off with the Dwyer. Yeah, speaking of three-year-old Chestnut Spitzer, he stepped up and stepped up in a big way here, I think, for Belmont and Windstar Farm. Uh, you know, Texas Red, your juvenile champion, of last year, or three years cup juvenile champion, I should say. Uh, he was no match for Spicer, uh, for it with Bill Mott, and it looks as though the King's Bishop might be his next start. Going to keep him short is what it appears, and uh, speaking of short private zone, he never comes up short. Uh, no. He always runs his race, but uh, he does run in shorter races, and the Belmont Sprint
Tournament Championship going seven furlongs is where he strutted his stuff yesterday. A couple of scratches out of the race, but, you know, this horse shows up with his race every time. Yeah, sometimes there are some horses in there that are a little bit better for them and beat them, but uh, that wasn't the case yesterday. Strong effort. Yeah, he had to be a single on a lot of people's pick six tickets after those scratches. He was good, good as he always is. Not as good as Lady Eli, no. the top performer <laughs> of the week. And, you know, what a, what a turn of foot she has. She really does. I mean, Chad, you know, quoted as saying that she is just breathes different air compared to horses and any horse that he's had, which is a, a fairly lofty comparison here. Um, and she put on quite a show, the show that we were hoping to see from her. She did indeed, and uh, Chad Brown uh, continues to put on the shows as well with uh, his uh, performers coming out of his barn. Not only did he uh, run one, two in the U.N., but he wins here, of course, with the Lady Eli and the Belmont Oaks, won the River Memories uh, this afternoon at the Belmont Park, and he just seems to have just one after another, another solid turf runner in his barn. Yeah, he does. I mean, obviously, she's leading from the front here, Lady Eli, but he dominates the turf racing uh, here on the East Coast. Uh, you know, it's getting to be year in and year out with him uh, doing so. And as he went 5 for 16 this week, he was a deserving recipient of our hot trainer. He sure was. And we'll check out the uh, standings now for trainers. Chad, uh, nine wins behind uh, Todd Fletcher. Todd still has a, uh, a little ways to go to uh, try to uh, break David Jacobson's record for most wins here at the uh, spring meet. But there's still a couple weeks to go. We'll see what he has left. Uh, maybe he's you know, kind of gearing up for Saratoga a little bit more. Might be a little bit uh, less runners than he's had uh, over the past uh, few weeks. But uh, Chad Brown, nine behind. Christoph Kaman, a solid meet, but nowhere near the top two. No, I, that's as you said, Todd Fletcher looking to seal the deal on another training title. And uh, I read her tease, I think, as far as uh, train or jockey standing, it's going to sit atop. But there's no, I mean, denying that Javier had one of the best weeks of his life. Yeah, he did have a great week. Uh, seven wins this week. A couple of stakes uh, efforts uh, as well. And he went down to uh, Gulfstream Park. So I win with uh, Mary Meadow uh, for trainer Mark Henning down there. The Princess Rooney. So wherever there's a stakes runner, uh, Javier will go and uh, seem to uh, give a, a big effort. But uh, he trails uh, I ride by six in these standings. And this could be uh, close, I guess, coming down to the wire here. Yeah. But. You know, it's funny who's going to ride here because there's other big races going on uh, throughout the East Coast. So It'll be interesting to see how that ends up, but uh, Irad is, is on top. Tie for owners right now. Michael Dubb, David Jacobson atop with the 11 uh, wins, and we'll see how that shakes out over the last couple weeks. We're out of time here on Insider. Maggie, thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Remember to tune into the National Racing Report Monday and Tuesday here on MSG+. Thanks for watching.